attempt a critical appreciation of Wallace Stevens' poem, The Emperor of Ice Cream. Marks 10-12 Answer The Emperor of Ice Cream by Wallace Stevens is perhaps the most baffling poem of the entire 20th century. Stevens plots the story into two eight-line stanzas, one for the kitchen where the ice cream is being made, and the other for the bedroom where a woman's corpse awaits descent covering. He plots it further by structuring the poem as a series of commands from an unknown master of ceremonies, directing with extreme oddities the neighbors in their funeral duties. We see the thematic contrast between life in the first stanza and death in the second stanza. The title reflects that human beings are no more resistant to death than ice cream is to the sun. The poet speaks in the voice of a man, the poet's spokesman, addressing the neighbors to carry out the funeral in certain ways. It is a custom in some tribal communities to satisfy the dead with food and drinks during mourning. Given this seemingly odd ritual, Critics suggest that Stevens might have based this poem on his experience of Canadian tribes, or maybe on some Red Indian American tribes. The first part of the poem takes on a light and merry appearance, conveying a scene of dawdling wenches, boys with flowers, and preparations of food and drinks. The reader might think from all the merriment that the poem takes place at a party or celebration. Then the tone of the poem takes a dark turn when we enter the second stanza. This time the picture is a cold dark room with cheap furniture. A woman is lying there with a sheet that does not quite cover her entire body, draped over her corpse. Instead of lighting soft and dim candles, bright light is demanded to glare on her body to show that she is now cold and silent in death. Stephen seems to suggest that we should look directly at death in all its matter-of-factness, and see it not as a state of some mystical transformation, but rather as a natural and common thing to face. The ceremony takes place in the women's own house rather than in a church, the preparations are inexpensive and minimal, including making the food in her own kitchen. The common people will attend the wake in their quotidian clothes rather than in their formal attire and flowers will be brought in the last month's newspapers rather than in vases or as garlands. All these details reflect Stephen's insistence that death is too ordinary and natural to be shocking. There is nothing to be romanticized, idealized and sentimentalized about death. The concluding line of both the stanzas, the only emperor is the emperor of ice cream, can be interpreted as the overlying theme of life's transitoriness like ice cream. Pleasant and delicious at first, ice cream melts and loses its qualities as time passes. Death, or time, too inevitably melts everyone into nothingness, no matter how happy and lovely they may be while alive. So, in the classic tradition of Carpe Diem, one should seize the day while one is able to do so. The muscular man in the first stanza perhaps symbolizes physicality and sexuality that remind us to enjoy the pleasures of life. The title of the poem carries the two antithetical images, where ice refers to cold, a symbol of death, and cream is the product of milk referring to life. That is why everyone is the emperor of a mere ice cream-like life which may melt any time and anywhere. Finished. Please subscribe to the channel for more updates of ready-made notes on English literature. Also, please share this channel to help any student pursue a degree in English literature. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please do not forget to like and comment.